Let's talk about the Sydney Festival. And as events this month have proved, militant activists like nothing better than getting useful idiots <laughs> to do their bidding. It was meant to be the Harbour City's grand cultural comeback, but Sydney Festival's already lost more than 25 acts due to a boycott led by pro-Palestinian group Artists Against Apartheid. The protest is a response to festival organisers' decision to accept funding from the Israeli embassy. It was actually based on love and the connections we see as fellow Indigenous populations living in a settler colonial society. Oh, dear God. Is she really claiming it's those nefarious Zionists scheming once again to covertly disseminate propaganda? What hateful message are they sending this time? The funding amounts to $20,000 awarded as a grant to a specific performance, Decadence, by Israeli choreographer Ohad Naharin, rather than Sydney Festival itself. The work is described as bursting at the seams with vitality and impact, featuring physical refinement alongside playfulness. There's no mention of a pro-Israel message. <laughs> yes, that was all just terribly confronting and hate-filled, as you just saw. So, which esteemed and talented artists have withdrawn in protest? Among those to pull out of the festival, comedian Tom Ballard. I love the festival and I love telling jokes, but standing up for human rights and standing against a system of apartheid is more important. Yes, former <laughs> ABC host Tom Ballard loves telling jokes, all right. At Triple J, he joked about, of all things, the Holocaust. As news.com.au noted in 2012, in a reference to cremations in World War II, concentration camps, Ballard suggested fan-forced ovens. Although the joke caused immediate offence, Ballard initially refused to apologise, saying on Twitter, if you don't like the show, just don't listen. The same comedian, in inverted commas, who at the Melbourne International Comedy Festival told the audience not to worry about COVID, saying it had killed a lot of people in nursing homes, but they were all Liberal voters. Mm, charming. Moving on from the useful idiots, let's look at the organisers of the boycott. The more grievances they can throw in, the merrier. The key criticism seems to be that this boycott politicises the arts. Is that fair? I mean, the premise of that question is flawed to me and many others. The arts is inherently political, um, especially given the fact that we are on stolen land. That's former journalist Janine Kallick. And if you don't think that amounts to censorship, just consider the fact she spearheaded a campaign last year to try to force Australian media to become mouthpieces for Palestinian activists. As the Australian reported, quote, the letter calls on editors and publishers to, quote, make space for Palestinian perspectives, prioritizing the voices of those most affected by the violence, and to avoid the both siderism that equates the victims of a mil military occupation with its instigators. Another organizer behind the festival boycott is Sarah or Sarah Saleh. This is how ABC introduced her last week. First, though, Sarah Saleh, a Palestinian poet and writer and one of the leaders of this campaign, which is being led by the Australian Boycott, Divestment and Sanctions movement. And as an artist myself, I understand that people have lost work, uh, especially, you know, having been underfunded or not supported in two years of a pandemic. It's a really painful time. And I think that's what's most egregious in all of this, that Sydney Festival has put us in this really quite inconsiderate and untenable position. Ah, oh, so she's the real victim. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know, God. would that poet be the same Sarah Saleh who sits on the board of the far-left activist group Get Up? For some reason, host Hamish MacDonald omitted to tell you that. And it's not the first time the ABC has given her a platform to agitate. Have a look at this from The Drum back in 2019. So there is a very clear narrative that is, uh, has weaponized racism, has stigmatized marginalized communities, and therefore, you, completely, they, are, they, they have blood on their hands. They have emboldened um, neo-Nazis and white supremacists. Look no further than Scott Morrison, um, Prime Minister Morrison's response after Burke Street last year, or uh, Tony Abbott and his team Australia, or just his existence altogether, I'll say, is, is offensive. 
Oh, dear <laughs> me. Indeed, he is part of the letter that that same Sarah wrote to the board of the Sydney Festival in which she says, and I quote, as of today, a thousand people have signed our artist statement declaring their solidarity with each other and opposing colonialism from the stolen land to another, from one stolen land to another. And she goes on to say, people of conscience cannot accept that our art spaces be co-opted, diluted or used by colonial machinery to distract from and suppress communities in their struggle for self-determination. <laughs> oh, yes. God. I can't wait to read her poetry. But anyway, uh, what a piece of work. And if you can't see the hypocrisy, hypocrisy for what it is or, the, you know, the anti-Semitism lurking behind this BDS campaign, you are an even bigger fool than the cowardly artists that she and her ilk manipulate. For us as a campaigning team and as organizers, we are here trying to build a movement and uh, a future that is one that is built on freedom and liberation and love mm. and equality for everybody.